Leanne Chuboff has more than 25 years of food, food service ex experience specializing in supply chain food safety and quality assurance. Currently, she's the Vice President of Technical Affairs for the Safe Quality Food Institute, which is responsible for the technical elements of the SQF program, including the development, maintenance, and technical support of the SQF code and supporting materials. Leanne, take it away. Thank you, Laura. Um, many thanks for this opportunity from Exemplar Global to participate in this International Auditor Symposium. As Laura stated, my name is Leanne Chuboff. Um, I am the Vice President of Technical Affairs at SQFI, which stands for the Safe Quality Food Institute. Um, today's uh, subject is about auditor inter internal auditors and it's about uh, talking about the challenges that we face in the audit approach. And here's our current approach. It's, it's all about everybody screaming and running because the auditors are coming, whether you're uh, conducting an audit on behalf of a facility or even doing an internal audit. Nobody wants to be upright and, or up forthright and um, you know honest sometimes. And so it's like you're extracting information. And so what our goal is uh, today is to talk about internal audits. But still, it's so very confusing. We have terminology that many people don't understand. Just audit itself means so many different things. There's first party, third party, second party audits. Nobody understands any of that. Within the food industry, we're SQFI and GFSI and all the acronyms that go along with that. We have a supplier audits and regulatory audits and internal audits. I mean, it's just never ending. We have accredited and certi certificates and certification terminology people truly don't understand. And in the end, we're all just confused. So what we wanna do is try and identify where our goals are today. So what I wanna provide to you is talk about the audit, the auditor and the audit approach. I'm going to share those challenges, the obstacles that we face with our auditors, with the audits and the audit approach. Um, I wanna list what we're currently doing to address these challenges. And maybe we're on the right track, maybe we're not. Sometimes we put in solutions when we don't really know the problem. So we, we need to come up with, with ideas and uh, ways to address some of these challenges. And in the end, what can we do to overcome them? So that's what I wanna do. because. In the end, we want to go from this to bliss. That's our goal. In the, that's our goal. So maybe this presentation will help us, help share what we're doing, and maybe I can get some feedback from you all as to what we could do a little bit better. So just before I begin, I want to give it to you from my perspective. So I work in the food safety arena. Um, not everybody listening is working in food safety. Maybe you're in other different industries out there, but this is our perspective from the food safety arena. And when Laura first came to me and talked about the inter internal audit or symposium, I was so fascinated because I, I think we all have the same challenges, regardless of what industry we're in. And so it's about addressing these challenges, especially when it comes to auditors. So what is SQFI? Um, we are a third party food safety and quality certification program. Our certification bodies are accredited to 17065, uh, ISO 17065, which is a product certification. So we have that third party accredited certification program. Uh, we are over a global uh, food safety initiative program, so we get our programs benchmarked to that. So our scheme requirements are benchmarked to this global food safety initiative uh, that is an offshoot of the uh, consumers, uh, the consumer protection uh, group. So uh, that that is that's where we, how we get our program uh, benchmarked. <clears throat> we have 30 different food sector categories, meaning we audit in 30 different uh, arenas, meaning uh, from primary produce uh, to livestock, all the way through manufacturing, honey, nuts, uh, soup, whatever, bread, whatever it is, and then storage and distribution, and the food packaging industry for um, those 
food packaging products like uh, plastic bags or corrugate boxes, those kinds of things. So we have this gamut from farm to fork when it comes to food safety. We have over 400 auditors that are credentialed in those specific industry scopes, including a quality code. So statistical process control and other quality tools uh, that are being used within the food arena. Um, our co code is developed with stakeholder input. We look at our retailers, our technical advisory council uh, for feedback, our certification bodies, the suppliers, and even the public comments. So anybody that generally eats food <laughs> is considered a stakeholder. Uh, so even if you're not auditing or have a certification body in the food industry, you are definitely a stakeholder because everybody has to consume food at one point or another. So that's that's where SQF comes in. I always say if you're not a, you know, if you're not, you don't have to worry about food food safety because we do. Alrighty, we are also accredited uh, globally. We have a glo or we also issue certificates globally. So our main areas of focus are in the United States, Canada, Mexico, um, and then Japan and Australia. We have it in other countries as well. Um, certificates in other countries, but overall we have about 8,000, 9,000 certificates globally. So we're a young standard. We just came over uh, from Australia into the United States. We're based off in, in Washington, D.C., um, and our program started here in the year 2000, and we were benchmarked in the program, uh, was benchmarked in 2003 and 2004. So that's a little bit about SQF to kind of give you our perspective in the in what we do so that you can kind of see the challenges that we face. So it's all about food safety with SQF. And so we have a, a high level of responsibility and a, um, and a high level of expectations of both of all of our stakeholders, including our sites, as well as our auditors. Um, we offer three different types of codes. Uh, we have a basic food safety fundamental code. And then, as I said, we have that gamut from farm to fork. And so we have food safety codes in primary manufacturing, storage and distribution, food packaging, and then also at the retailer level. So uh, retailers can also apply these food safety standards into their operation or and get uh, audited against these standards in their operation. And then we have the food quality code which elevates the, the site's uh, food quality program and measures those food quality, uh, the food quality tools that they have in place. So what are challenges when it comes to our program? And again, regardless of what industry you're in, I'm pretty sure you, you probably share these same challenges. It's number one, the auditor pool themselves. So the auditor pool has, um, you know, it's either we don't have enough auditors or enough uh, good auditors or auditors in all of those different food sector categories that we need. So uh, honey, for example, it's, it's, it's difficult to find an auditor that has the credentials in honey or meat and processing of meat and poultry. And then you get into these complex food operations that have more than one in, in commodity. So maybe they May manufacture chocolate and they also make cookies. So you need people, auditors that are skilled in cookies and chocolate. And what happens oftentimes is that the auditor pool, it's almost used as a retirement plan. You have these seasoned, uh, seasoned auditor or seasoned professionals that are in manufacturing and then they want to transfer over to auditing as their retirement plan. And audit life, as you know, isn't, isn't pretty. Um, it's a lot of travel. And, and sometimes it's a lot of report writing, so that's a challenge for us. The other challenge is in the audit duration um, and the predictability and the complexity of the codes and that there's just too many codes and audit duration, we just don't have enough time to do the audit. Uh, I've heard some suppliers and sites that say, you know, I'd rather have one five-day audit than five audits throughout the year. And so we're not putting, it doesn't allow us to, to really focus on the risks, especially as it relates to food safety. We need to focus on those risks that are causing uh, foodborne outbreaks or perhaps even uh, recalls that are going on out there. The other challenge uh, that we have is predictability. Um, the site knows you're coming. Uh, they're often our audits because they're accredited. We did incorporate an un, uh, unannounced audit, but often our audits are are 
uh, predict it because they know you're coming so they can prepare. They know what the auditor likes for lunch. They know what time the auditor will be there. They know what time the auditor will leave. They know when, you know, who not to bring to work that day because they might be troubled. And I know that because I lived that. I worked in manufacturing and I prepared for audits and that's what you do. Um, and so predictability can be a challenge for us. Um, and it's something that it, we need to address. So predictability sometimes leads to complacency and that's something that perhaps we need to address. Additionally, complexity of the code and the many requirements that we have based off of regulatory input, based off of global feedback that we get. Um, we're asking our auditors to do more um, in less time or perhaps the same amount of time requiring different skill sets. And so the complexity of the code gets, gets overwhelming and that's something that is a big challenge for us. And then also there's too many codes. Uh, there's audits that are tacked on because a manufacturer or a supplier or a buyer, retailer, they, they need their special requirements uh, addressed. So we have a lot of addendums that need to be done or added on to the audit, and it gets to be overwhelming for auditors. And it's, again, perhaps a new skill set or um, just something that they're, they're not uh, prepared for. And then auditor competence. So it's always a buzzword right now is, does the, is the auditor competent? And what we have is, uh, you know, do we have the right skill set? It's not just the technical knowledge that the auditor needs, it's the understanding the behavior as well as the auditing skills. So do they have the right communication style? Do they have the right interview skills? Um, can they write the reports correctly? It's, so it's not just measuring the technical knowledge, but it, there's a lot that's um, compounded into it. So there's a lot of challenges that are out there. And we at SQF is, have created a couple, have created solutions for this. Um, not all of them, but again, are, are we on the right track? Are we really doing what we need to do? Um, are, we, are we meeting the expectation of the audit outcomes? So what we need is a true measurement of the SQF code um, and food safety, and are we doing that? So with um, some of the proposed solutions that we have, uh, number one is our auditor pool. And, and what we're doing in that area is re we're recruiting new talent, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. I just, we we're, we're, have a scholarship initiative, and, um, and I'll provide more information on my, in my next slide. The audit duration, predictability, complexity of the codes, and too many codes. We actually have designed a, a traceback audit approach, and it's using um, true traceability uh, to address and focus on the risks that are out there. Um, and then auditor competence. Uh, so auditor competence, what we have in that arena is uh, we've developed an examination, a competency-based examination, and witness tool. So what we did is we took our uh, requirements that are in our code, we identified the competencies that are associated with each of those requirements. So what are the skills and the knowledge needed for each of that, uh, developed an examination that measures that knowledge and developed a witness tool that evaluates those skills. And so we wanted to make sure that our auditors had the right knowledge, the skills and behavior in order to audit against the SQF code and audit against food safety. So uh, with the auditor pool, what I wanted to share with you is our, our scholarship initiative. What we were finding is that, again, the challenge is, is that auditing is a rigorous position, whether you're an internal auditor, whether you're an external auditor, whether you're auditing suppliers or sites or whatever yourselves, it's, it's a lot of work and what we are looking at is recruiting young talent and it's called the scholarship initiative and understanding that uh, uni this target is university students. So students that are participating um, in a university program in food science or agri-science or any of that that's specialized into the food industry. And what what we're saying is that when you graduate from college or from university, that you're not, you can't be a full SQF auditor, but to create auditing 
as a career and bringing that awareness of auditing as a career. And so what we've done is uh, have a scholarship initiative. Our scholarship initiative is through the FMI Foundation. Uh, SQF is under the parent organization of the Food Marketing Institute, uh, which is an association that is uh, represents retailers like um, uh, grocery manufacturers uh, internationally. It could be Kohl's in Australia, um, Safeway here in the United States. Um, so we represent those retailers. Um, so SQF. Uh, has partnered with the FMI Foundation, and they're issuing scholarships each year. So these scholarships are a great way to to bring an awareness that auditing is a is a career, and it brings that young talented pool in there, and it also helps them shape their career. So perhaps they graduate from the university, work in a food establishment, but focus on internal audits as part of their career and focus on supplier audits or as a, as, as a uh, way of gaining that experience so that eventually when they do want to move on, they can think of auditing as a career option for them. So the, these are $3,000 scholarships uh, that that can be applied for. Last year, we had 84 applicants from um, like 36 different universities. And uh, these applicants, uh, we reviewed their application and there were 10 award winners. Uh, this year, we've upped the award winners to 15 award winners. Um, additionally, in addition to those $3,000 scholarship, each of the recipients uh, receive uh, travel voucher and registration to our annual conference um, and our annual conference this year is in Atlanta at the end of October. So applications can can be put forth on the website right now. So if you know of any young students that would be interested in this scholarship and understanding more about how auditing can be a career, then they can apply right onto the uh, foundation website. So uh, the foundation is fmi.org slash foundation slash scholarship. The other initiative I wanted to talk about today is our traceback initiative. Um, our traceback initiative is to address the challenges that we face when it comes to audit duration, complexity of the code, um, as well as even auditor competence, because a lot of times that competency is driven, the incompetency is perceived because it's inconsistent uh, application of the SQF code. So what we're doing is initiating a product traceback activity. And this is a true traceability and everybody does their trace traceability exercises, but because we're 17065 and product-based certification, it means that the product that we are auditing is actually, um, the, is actually certified. So the candy that you eat or the chips or snacks or that product is certified. So what we're doing with product traceback and traceability is putting the product back in product certification. And traceability looks at your entire supply chain and identifying where all the ingredients go into that one um, product and where, where, where they go, where they're from and where they go and where, they, where they're distributed to. But traceability can go back even further, where traceability can go back to who was manufacturing, who was on the line the day that that product was manufactured, or how was sanitation cleaned that day. So you can truly pull a product off the shelf, look at the lock coating on that product, and do a true traceback. And what this does is it, it, focus, it allows us to have a targeted approach through the manufacturing process. So it allows us to look at all of our policies, procedures, um, work instructions, our SOPs, uh, any of the programs that are associated with that written food safety plan. Um, it looks at, it targets the, the workers on the line and the, the procedures that were done that day, the GMP checks. So ultimately it identifies and helps auditors prioritize the specific elements that are uh, targeted to food safety. A and it, it doesn't allow that checklist mentality because oftentimes auditors come in and they do a checklist and they check a box and they tick a box that that requirement has been met. 
And instead, what this approach does, it allows a more systematic approach and allows the auditors to target in on their food safety risks and allows auditors to prioritize where, the, where they need to focus. Um, and it, it gets rid of, I'm looking at my code and I'm ticking a box to say that I, re I recorded that and that element is in, in compliance or not in compliance. Instead, it lets the auditors think holistically and systematically rather than just focus on meeting specific requirements. So we establish procedures um, so that the audit isn't as predictable. Um, so we establish these procedures to say, maybe I'm going to start in this area instead of that area. And it kind of um, mixes up the audit a little bit. Um, and it also provides auditors with tools and resources um, and, and a checklist so that they do have some uniform approach. Um, and, it, it, and in the end, it's focus-based. Um, and it's a process-based audit. And that's really what, what our focus is when it comes to the traceability initiative. So what can we do to improve audit performance? There's a lot of things we can do uh, to improve audit performance, uh, tackling those challenges that we face every day as auditors. The first thing, and I'm, it's really the plan, do, uh, check, act method. So as auditors, um, we can plan. We could state state our goal, whether what our goal is, um, is to audit the program or audit whatever, you know, our, establish the plan, or maybe it's incorporating a new policy or procedure or a new approach. Um, but we can plan um, and, and state our goal. And, and maybe this is where we can address predictability, because as, a, as an auditor, maybe we want to change our start time. Maybe we want to audit second shift instead of first shift. Maybe we start at two and end at eight instead of starting at eight and ending at two, you know. So maybe we need to change it up, but state the goal. What are you trying to address? Uh, what can we try and achieve through here? Then you need to gain um, management support. And so management support uh, is really the key to making any of these programs successful. So getting management buy-in um, and getting their commitment to do the right thing is the key and is what's going to drive the success of the program. You can't do it without management support. Um, and so you need to get, get that. Then you need to train the employees uh, and encourage proper behavior. And that might be training your internal auditors. It might be uh, training employees. But um, encouraging that proper behavior is being leaders and, uh, and executing the the plan and in demonstrating what it is that that needs to be done the second thing to do is do it implement the program um, for us it's about food safety so if you have policies and procedures you wanted to put into place then you need to implement the program and, and conduct those internal audits so do the internal audits that that you have put forth uh, or what your stated goal was and maybe it's a particular room. Uh, oftentimes, when we do internal audits, we like to eat the elephant all at one bite. So a new, a new approach might be taking smaller chunks out of that elephant and eating it one little bite at a time. Um, so it might be focusing on a room or a process or a procedure or whatever, but um, conduct those internal audits to make sure that everybody's doing what they what they need to be doing. And then check, um, check on and follow up on those non-conformances. Sometimes with internal audits, we fail to take it to the next step. Instead, what we do is we create our list of our to-do list, right? And how can we tackle our to-do list? But we need to implement a true root cause analysis that's going to provide long-term preventive control. So implement a root cause analysis and follow up on those non-conformances so that we can have long-term preventative control um, and prevent you know, these from reoccurring in the end. And then lastly, act. And I, I have to admit I'm from Chicago and uh, 2016 
was a pretty magical year. Uh, so uh, the Chicago Cubs won the World Series, and that was a magical year for me. And so I will never give up an opportunity to use the Cubs in a presentation, and 2016 kind of presented me that opportunity. But why I use the Cubs, um, and it kind of summarizes pretty much everything that I, not that everything I've talked about, but really the root of, of getting involvement and getting root and getting management involved. So I say, you know, in, in the end, you build continuous improvement and hopefully you repeat. But I use the Chicago Cubs because uh, just to give you a brief history, uh, we haven't, the World Series is this coveted cup that everybody wants every year and it took us, took the Cubs 108 years to achieve this. And why, why did it take 108 years and why did they achieve it in 2016? And it really boiled down to management commitment and the culture that was created within the organization. Um, and five years prior to that, in 2011, the Chicago Cubs were sold to Tom Ricketts, a, a gentleman that uh, was a longtime Cubs fan, but he bought the Cubs and he changed the culture of that organization, which drove success. He changed it from being what was called the lovable losers to a winning culture. And it started with him and the people that reported into him when it came to the president and the op president of operations, um, the general manager, trickled down to who reported up to them um, from the player uh the, the players, uh, coaches and managers, down to the players themselves, all the way down into the farm organizations. So it was this level and management commitment to win the World Series. And it wasn't it wasn't just a, a goal, but it was something that everybody knew they wanted to build to contribute to. And so that's what is a perfect example of management commitment and making the program work and no matter what you do whether you're an internal auditor or you're working on the line if you don't have that culture within your organization that business culture within your organization that's driving success it's not going to be successful so that's my biggest commitment and that's why i use this is because when i after they won they shared all the stories as to how they built this organization and changed the culture and it just really drove home to me that it didn't doesn't matter what industry you're in you need that management commitment in order to um, in order to drive any of your programs that are out there and so with SQF um, it's all about food safety and managing the operation um, when it comes to your internal audit program it's identifying what those challenges and obstacles are within your organization. I shared with you some of the challenges and obstacles that we face when it comes to our auditors, uh, whether it's in recruiting new talent um, and offering up a scholarship initiative, or um, whether it's dealing with the audit approach itself to eliminate predictability um, or creating a new mentality with auditors and getting rid of a checklist approach and really focusing on um, the, audit, the audit process itself. Um, but, but it's identifying those challenges and obstacles that you face in order to improve your internal audit program or your programs in general. And so with that, I say thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate, I appreciate all that you uh, do to make the industry better. Thanks again. Thanks, Leanne. This ends today's presentation. Thanks for attending.